Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. This time for Josh. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And I know I got the bit of a bright light here because I didn't want to turn on the ceiling fan light because it's still a bit hot here in Texas. But yeah, Josh wanted me to review Blow Up from 1966. Thank you so much for that. And I know this is a film is very much beloved. Michelangelo Antonidi. Antonidi. I can't pronounce his last name. I apologize. Antonidi. Antonio Tutti Frutti. Stars David Hemmings, who I do like in Dario Argento's film Deep Red. And the film I thought could have been interesting, but it's very, very pretentious. I think it's very, very boring, and really, not much happens in the film, and that seems to be the purpose. Like, apparently the fact that it's a mystery that has no result and no finality, that a mystery without a solution is the whole point of the movie. I honestly think that's a very stupid solution to have and a very stupid point to have unless you're you know critics that eat this stuff up like only fans goblin cock david hemmings is his photographer and he's very they would say the word toxic now misogynistic you know all this stuff where he's taking pictures of his model and he's straddling her. He's like, yes, yes, yes. He's taking pictures and she's fine with it. Then he's taking pictures of these other models because he's took too much time with that. So he's like to get to this one and he's like to get to these other girls that he need to take pictures to. So he has this group of models and he's yelling at them, stop chewing that gum. Not on my floor. Come on, do this, do this. Just being a bit of a dick. So he's taking pictures, and you tell he's just getting so bored, he just leaves. Tells him, close your eyes, he puts on his shoes, he leaves. And then he even gets back to his office, and he gets a phone call. Oh, are they there? Well, make sure they keep their eyes closed. Just a bit of a dick. And we don't really get a sense to why he's such a dick, other than I guess he's so bored. I don't know. Or he's just a dick. And then you have these two younger teen models that want to get their pictures taken and be models themselves. And they're like, what can we come back? And he's like, don't. Or, get rid of that bag. It's diabolical. They can just be a complete dick. And then, so much of the film is a non-plot that it feels so sluggish that it takes forever for anything to really happen. Because the rest of the plot is he visits an antique shop, which felt like a pointless scene because the, the person is like, no, you can't buy this, you can't buy this, you can't buy this. And I'm sitting there going, then why is the shop open in the first place, buddy? If no one can buy anything, then why even have a shop? But he's standing in for someone else. I'm like, well, I'm sure that someone will be pissed that, hey, I'm trying to sell some stuff. You're telling everybody no. You're fired. <laughs> So it seems like the whole scene was pointless. Then he goes to the girl that owns the place and is able to buy this propeller. I'm sure the propeller, there's supposed to be some deeper meaning, some deep and deeper underlying theme of what the propeller represents. Unless he stitches on his ass and flies away like a cartoon of tailspin, I don't care. I don't care. To me, there's not much there as compared to what other people say about it. Just put the propeller up your ass and fly away, please. So then he takes pictures at the park, and there's a couple embracing, and the lady gets pissed. Now, you never find out why she's so pissed. You just say, now you're supposed to think, well, maybe she just don't want her privacy invaded, which is understanding. Well, there could be something else to it. Was she maybe cheating on someone with this guy? Maybe some other murderous affair? We never know. Because it's a mystery without a solution. And that's the whole point. Which I think is a stupid point. So 
So she wants the pictures badly. He says no. And he just wanders around. He drives around. There's a picket line. Someone puts one of their signs in his car, which I think is stupid because all he's going to do is, bye bye, bitch. <laughs> you see this sign? I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> Thank you. It takes forever until he finally gets to his apartment and he blows up the, the pictures. And he's staring, he's staring, he's staring. And then he sees something and it looks like a guy in the bushes nearby with a gun. And then instead of calling the police or anything, he just calls someone else. Granted, I think if someone called me and said, I think I've got a picture of a guy with a gun, I would drive right away towards there, but no. That doesn't happen for some reason. He never calls the cops, never calls anybody. Instead, the two teens arrive. They get into kind of a threesome, but not really, because he sees something in the photo. After Drozio got their tops off it. And like it feel it seems like he's gonna assault one, but then she lights it, and then they're kind of tussling in like a ha 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 all happy three way. But then he stops them. We'll do this tomorrow. They leave. He sees what looks like a body. Now, I don't know who that body would be. Is that the guy with the gun? But then he kept taking pictures and now the guy's body is there? Or, I guess... Because there's a lady embracing a guy. <clears throat> he took pictures. He walked off. She chased him. So the guy sees his dead body, goes back, and I swear to God, the guy on the ground looks like the guy that the girl was embracing. If Maybe I'm wrong with that. If so, I apologize. I probably am. But if that's the case, when did that guy die for him to take the pictures that's near the bushes that he finds the dead body? Because I swear, like, he took the pictures, you see the girl embracing the guy, and I swear it's that guy on the ground, but if he's taking pictures... And he keeps taking pictures, and he leaves, and he doesn't hear a gunshot. Uh, he took enough pictures, and he's far away to... I don't know. I didn't really understand any of that. But you know what? I might have gotten it wrong. I might have misunderstood. But it doesn't matter, because you never find out what the fuck the whole point of it was anyway. Because then he goes there, he sees a body, he doesn't call the cops... He doesn't get to a payphone. He doesn't fly. To, hey, hey, stop. There's a dead body over here. He doesn't bring his camera. If you think a fucking body may be there, why would you not bring your fucking camera with you? Your photographer taking pictures is your whole damn job. You think there's a dead body here. You're not going to bring your fucking camera with you? How does that work? I don't understand it. I don't get it. Why not bring your camera with you? So he doesn't bring his camera, so he take, take the picture. He doesn't try to contact someone, doesn't try to stop a car, doesn't try to get a cop. He just goes home. So I'm, I'm trying to think, if he goes home and finds that his place has been wrecked, if that's before or after the... Either way, at one point he goes home, finds his place is wrecked, the, his pictures are taken, The he follows a lady to a bar where this band... What was the name of the band? The Yardbirds are playing. And then the guitarist or whatever is like, something's buzzing on the speakers and he... Just decides to break his guitar. Because, you know, that's how you do it. When your speaker's broke, you just break your guitar. Because that'll fix everything. Then people don't know they get the broken guitar. And then David Hemmings gets it. But then he goes out and then he throws it down. I'm like, then why did you grab it in the first place? And then you walk to the other side then you throw it down. And I'm sure there's supposed to be some deep meaning behind that. About materialism. And your materialism is as important as we think. Because this is a guy that... Needs something physical. He needs the propeller. He needs this. But then he doesn't need it. I'm like, whatever the fuck. Where's the entertainment? How about that? Where's a movie? Where's an entertainment movie? Where's that at? Is that anywhere in this? Because I don't see it. 
Tis instead. He goes, then he goes to a party where there's, there's the model he saw much earlier in the film. There's other people. He, people get high and drunk. He passes out. He wakes up. And he goes back to that place and lo and behold the body is gone. And then he sees like a bunch of mimes drive by and play mime tennis. And then he picks up an imaginary ball and throws it playing along with them. Then he's in the middle of a field. He walks away, then he disappears. Then the movie's over. It's a boring, snooze-fest, pretentious-ass non-movie. It's a mystery. Oh yeah, I forgot. And sometime at one point, the lady that was mad at him, she went by, and they have a bit of a smooch-fest, take her off their clothes a bit. And he gives her pictures, but it's the wrong pictures. Then she gives him a phone number, but it's not the right phone number. So that happened in between as well. And I don't think we really see... We don't see a whole lot of that lady ever again. So I don't know what the hell the point was. I don't know what the hell the whole point of the movie was. It's just so nonchalant and boring. If you wanted David Hemmings' mystery, that's an actual mystery, you go watch Deep Red with Dario Argento. <clears throat> There's a reason why Deep Red is much more well known than this movie. I don't care how many critics want to lick its crack and kiss its taint. I, in my opinion, I think Deep Red is a good movie. If you want mystery where you have a guy that's trying to figure out what's going on, uh, go to Brian De Palma. Go to Blow Out with John Travolta. Granted, his was with sound design, but then he, he links it with like pictures someone took, he took that's in a newspaper. That's an actual mystery. And you find out a bit what's going on. Now, the result might not be all sunshine and rainbows, but that's an actual movie. That's an actual story being told. And I thought, pretty decent film. That's a way better than this. Go watch Blow Out. Hell, Body Double. Number of other Brian De Palma films. Or hell, things like Rear Window and stuff where you, know, you the guy's taking pictures and it's across the street and am I misconstruing things or is this really what's happening? You just did David Hemmings being a prick, uh, treating a lot of women like crap, buying propellers, wandering around with a thumb up his ass, doing asinine things like, I find a dead body, but I'm not going to tell anybody. I think I'm going to go somewhere that might be something. If not a body, then something else might be there. I'm not going to tape my camera, even though I'm a photographer. I don't tape this guitar piece, but then I'm going to throw it away. So why did you in the first place? The mind thing, I'm sure it's supposed to be something about reality versus what we think is reality. Maybe this guy imagined all these things. Maybe it was all in his head. Okay. And. I just. What should I do with that information, Mr. Michelangelo? Raphael, Dante, Leonardo will be pissed you made this movie. They go, wow, dude, stop eating the fucking state ass pizza. You're wasting your motherfucking time. You played yourself. You played yourself, Mikey. You played yourself. You try to be an art student. You failed. But obviously he didn't fail because he got nominated for, I think, a Academy Award foreign film. And uh, Let me actually check that out real quick. It got a lot of accolades, so no, it did not fail. A lot of people liked it. I just don't see it. Because I looked at this and I go, it was nominated for a Tammy Award for Best Director and Best Original Screenplay in 1967 Tammy Awards. It was nominated for British Academy Awards. It won the Cannes Film Festival Award. Mars Rousseze says one of the 39 essential foreign films for a young filmmaker. 87% Rod Tomatoes. Why?
A hypnotic conjuring act in which a character is awakened briefly from a deep sleep of bored alienation and then drifts away again. The observation that we are happy when we are doing what we do well with unhappy seeking pleasure elsewhere. Really? Like, I just looked at reviews. It just sounds like pretentious. Up your own ass. The fart smell like roses. Bullshit. With this movie. You love it. Be my guest. And I mean, if Josh, if he loves it, that's fine. You can feel free to write what he likes about it. Nothing wrong with that. Just not my cup of tea. Just not for me, I guess. Just not for me, I guess. But hey, with that said... Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now. Later.